doctor now goes crazy on my 600 pound life. Don't try to teach me medicine. Oh, I'm not trying to teach you medicine. Do you believe in God? What does that have to do with this discussion? It's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of medicine and science and physiology. The lying need to stop now. For four months I have seen you from day one, you have not any way. You can you smart enough not to throw your own trash toward somebody else's trash. It's been three months. Even after all that, you don't want to do the work. Miss Shanae had been battling with her body and weight gain for as long as she could remember. Her life was full of tragedies, and the only solace she could find was in the comfort of binge eating. So she began sneaking in food and never stopped. And now she was solely dependent on her husband and had enough of being a burden. And now her cravings and eating habits were out of control. I have cravings about three, four times a week. I know people passing by probably look at me like, look at her, I'm so fat. But I don't care right now because it's so good. The hell with them. When I'm eating, I do feel happy. All this weight gain was now taking a tremendous toll on her health. Any day could be her last. So Shanae decided to take charge of her life and contacted Dr. Now for his weight loss program. The road was going to be long and hard, but she seemed prepared. Upon reaching the appointment, she weighed around 665 pounds. And there went the doctor listing all the much needed reality checks out for them to see. From her husband being the enabler and their family dynamic, he told them all and let her and them stew in it. This is a matter of life and death for you. You need to make those changes happen now. It's not going to be easy. It's going to have to start with you, Shanae. I'm willing to do this. That's why I'm here, to get help. After a couple of months, Shanae missed an appointment because of traveling, though she did consider moving to Houston for the program, and they eventually did. However, as the moving approached, her and her husband got into little arguments. It was pretty clear Shanae was losing her cool with all the changes happening around her, and so she took it out on her husband. And these arguments continued to Houston. Finally, the couple reached the doctor's office, and lo and behold, Shanae did not lose any weight, instead gained another 28 pounds. Though she tried to talk her way out of taking the blame for the weight gain, try being the key word here, that doesn't work on the doctor. Nope, you gave her the wake-up call, coupled with necessary warnings. You're trying to kidding yourself with the food right now. I know you're not trying, but you're doing it. What happened two and a half months ago? Distress. What kind of stress you have? It's a lot of things that go on. Shanae was turning out to be one tough patient to deal with. She had a diet plan and goal to follow to qualify for the surgery, and yet she didn't seem to be working hard to achieve even that, let alone the whole program. To avoid accountability, she missed appointments, and then faked an emergency to get admitted into the hospital. She wanted quick fixes, and that only gained her more weight, nothing else. Ultimately, Dr. Now had enough of her playing him for a fool, and blew up on her. Shanae, the lying need to stop now. Here's the situation. For four months, I have seen you from day one. You haven't lost any weight. And then you're smart enough not to throw your own trash, throw it to somebody else's trash. Oh, the woman was testing Dr. Now's patience. Shanae finally managed to get an apartment, but she was back to her bad behavior and took no responsibility for her actions. Yup, she missed another appointment because she knew she had gained weight again all those pounds lost down the drain. However, instead of having a reasonable conversation, she antagonized the doctor, and things got a little out of hand. Don't try to teach me medicine. Oh, I'm not trying to teach you medicine. Do you believe in God? What does that have to do with this discussion? It's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of medicine and science and physiology. After some time, Sinead decided to commit to the program again and started her therapy once more. And even her therapist identified her issues with accountability, laying all the blame on others. After another month, she went to the appointment, and as expected, she had again gained weight. The only thing left for the doctor to do now was to go for an ultimatum. You lose 30 pounds in one month, it gets you back in program. If you don't, there's nothing else I can do. And if you don't make the changes, nobody else can help you. Yeah. You understand that. Bethany was over 600 pounds and a mom to two kids. 
Her oldest had taken over the majority of the household responsibilities, and that just made her feel even worse. Her body was falling apart. Food was such a personal experience for Bethany that it got to the point that she wanted to be alone to enjoy and savor the moments. However, she just couldn't stop eating, and that led her here with her daughters and husband bringing her food and snacks all day long. Her whole life revolved around episodes of depression, and after her second child, she claimed she hadn't recovered from her postpartum, and food was the only constant that kept her going. And her daughters felt that deeply. I don't think I could keep going if I lose my mom but I can't handle it anymore. I would love my mom to feel happy again. I just want her to have all the things that she had before. Bethany knew her life needed to be changed, and quite drastically at that. So she managed to take the first step and enroll herself in the weight loss program. However, she had a hard time tackling her anxiety and panic attacks. It was evident she was upset the whole way over to Houston, and the very first step of checking her weight further made her anxious. She was over 600 pounds, and the number scared her. Then came Dr. Now, who's always ready to give the much-needed hard truth to these patients. So he did, and highlighted their unhealthy family dynamics. That was a lot to take, but Bethany seemed to be ready to take on this arduous journey. You're just looking for a magic solution. No, I'm not. I'm here to get help to change that. Surgery is going to take away the physical gravity, but there is an emotional component that needs to be addressed as well. So the goal was set for the next two months, but Bethany did not seem to be working hard enough for it. She claimed she'd been eating healthy, but Dr. Now caught her lying and, well, he called her out on that. Though she tried to talk her way out of it, the doctor wasn't falling for those tricks. It became pretty clear to her there was no magical solution, only hard work from that point forward. The only question was, would Bethany be able to handle that? I see you only lost 14 pounds, which is nowhere near your goal. It's that you may have made some small changes, but you're still hoping for a magic solution, so you don't have to do any of the really hard work. Doctor now wanted Bethany to start her psychotherapy, and it was going to be a piece of cake for her to fall right back to her old habits and give in to her cravings. Though she managed to lose a bit of weight, it was no way near enough to the intended target. On top of that, she missed her therapy appointment too. Well, Dr. Now had no choice but to call her out on her behavior. You're starting to fall back into this false hope and mentality that the surgery is going to do all the work for you. When we have explained how important it is that you work on the issues you need. After the surgery, it was supposed to get easier. That's what Bethany kept saying as the weighing scale highlighted the fact that she only lost four pounds in the last month. She claimed to have done everything by the book, but it was not showing. The doctor was being pushed to his limits by Bethany's denial and wishful thinking that her problems are gonna bibbidi-bobbidi-boo and disappear. Oh, Bethany was due for one heck of a reality check. You have a very important choice to make. Whether you want to turn your life around or make excuses and end up eating yourself to death. So you need to keep going to those appointments and do what you need to do before it's too late. Bethany soon realized that the program was not giving her the results she hoped for. And so she decided to quit the program. However, before doing that, Dr. Now still tried to convince her to deal with her emotional and psychological issues first, but it became apparent she was not going to do that. This could have been a great opportunity for her, only if she would have fully committed to it. Your body is going to very quickly be at breaking point and that'll be it for you. Do you understand? It's been really hard just dealing with cravings. I appreciate all your help, but this is what I have to do. Aaron had struggled with weight his whole life, and being raised in a strict household didn't help matters either. He was bullied and made fun of, and the more that happened, the more he found comfort in food. Ultimately, it got to the point where he just lived to eat. This continued till he was 27 years old, and then he lost his mother to her weight issues, and his whole perspective shifted. I'm not ready to die. I just can't give up, and I know I can't wait any longer. I have to do it now, because my last day on this earth is coming soon, and every day I wait, it's another day closer I get to that. And now, he wanted to change for the better, and be the son 
brother and uncle his family deserved. So he went to the only person who could help him, Dr. Now. Aaron thought he would be in the 600s now, but that was just a pipe dream, as the weighing scale showed he was a whopping 718 pounds. This did put him at quite a high risk for the surgery, but we know that surgery was not the magic cure people thought it was. So before enrolling Aaron into the program, Dr. Now laid out the harsh reality for him that he just found the stresses of his life as an excuse to overeat. And that's gotta stop. You need to show me that you're willing to work hard. Because if you don't, we're not moving ahead with you. I'm also gonna give you some exercises that I don't want you to start on to get your stamina. Because you're very close to your body's breaking point. To be scheduled for the surgery, Aaron had to lose over 120 pounds. It was bound to be a challenging task, and his father got a heart attack right after that. And that certainly made it even more difficult to achieve. However, he was given an extra month to work all that out, and when he weighed again after three months, all he had lost was just 22 pounds. When asked for accountability, Aaron was quick to blame it all on his circumstances, and that made Dr. Now really mad at him. So he told him what was going on. I'm sorry what you all went through, but that's no excuse to have not done the diet. It's been three months. Even after all of that, you don't want to do the work. And you want to blame everything else for why you're not doing it. What's the point of that? Moving on, Aaron did manage to lose the required pounds for the surgery. And his surgery was a success, too. However, he had to be very, very careful afterward, as it was too easy for him to just give in to his cravings. In his next appointment, he was expected to be well below 485 pounds, but he managed to lose only 21 pounds and still be above 500 pounds. And Dr. Now was not happy with that progress. If your emotional issues are coming to the surface and you're starting to use food to cope again, then we're about to have a very serious situation. So we need to make sure we prevent that or your weight loss will stop. The cravings did come back and they were strong. But to beat those, Aaron had to work through his emotional and psychological issues. It was very overwhelming for him, but he had the will to move on. So he worked through those and was able to achieve all the weight loss monthly goals and be the person he was always meant to be. I really appreciate your service that you've done for our country, Dad. I look up to you for that. You know what? I'm proud of you, too. Thank you. And what you're doing. I mean, that's fantastic, son. I love you, Daddy. I love you, too, son. Thank you. Coming from a broken home can affect one person in a million different ways. Penny had a similar experience. And during all this tragedy, she made food her sole best friend. She was a mother of one boy, and people claimed she was a great mom. But she could only do so much from being bedbound. For a long while, Penny hadn't walked, and so considered herself disabled. Her only hope now resided with the weight loss program. But we know even going to Houston proves to be one heck of a difficult feat to accomplish. However, it also tests how serious these people are about changing their lives for the better. When you and I spoke, you ended the call with, I'm gonna help you. And that would never speak to me. Those words gave me the strength to come. I'm looking forward to start this process. Initially, Penny seemed to be following the diet plan and was good about sticking to this program. And that's why she qualified for the gastric bypass. However, her attitude and behavior soon took a nasty turn right after the surgery when she was discharged from the hospital. She had a problem with every diet plan that was handed out to her. Moreover, she had issues with hospital policies as well as the physical therapy she was advised to do so she could be back on her feet again. It was clear she wanted to remain in bed and not move around one bit. Well, she was testing Dr. Now's patience with her antics. Yeah, today, okay. Yeah, I'm just okay. I'm concerned that Penny convinced herself that she's permanently disabled. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to help her. Her next plan of action was to miss her appointments. Yeah, all that progress that she achieved before the surgery and the success of the surgery was failing big time. Dr. Now eventually called her in for an evaluation. And yep, Miss Penny thought she could circle the doctor with her lies. She blamed it all on the weighing scales and the hospital staff not weighing her right. And when that didn't work, here came the waterworks. The doctor, though, saw right through all of that. 
And what was worse, though, was her husband who enabled her behavior. Penny is her worst enemy, and her husband is the second worst enemy that she got. This is a dangerous game she played. Let me get you some ice cream. People like Penny, they play this kind of game. One day, I get the notice to sign their death certificate. Penny was walking a thin line with this program. And if she didn't change her perspective, she was gone for good. Penny was doing the exact opposite of every instruction and plan she was told to follow. Guess she could not resist her cravings or her addiction to food. What was ironic, though, was that she still expected positive results even after pulling all those stunts, playing the victim card like a pro. Well, that was the last straw for the doctor, as he wasn't getting through to her anymore. I don't want you to say the truth is in this game. I'm feeling like I've just been sucker punched again. Why didn't this do what it's supposed to do, what I'm doing, what I'm supposed to do?